student of EFT or TAPI. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You might have heard of. Um, and I'm sort of part way through getting a practitioner level in that. So um, generally, when people come to see me, I'll use a combination of, of pretty much everything. Um, and somewhere in amongst all that, there'll be something that'll be helpful for people. Um, people come to see me for a range of different things. Whether it's you know giving up smoking, I guess is the classic one that a lot of people come to see a hypnotherapist for. But um, you know as well anxiety and depression and you know right through to you know small children bedwetting um, you know kids nervous about other kids making fun of them at school all those sort of things um, so it's varied and, and I love the work you know it's beautiful to be able to see people come into your room and, and trust you and um, you know share with you all, all the things that are happening to them um, and then you see them walk out, you know, like they've taken off a heavy old coat and put it in the corner and they're lighter and, wow, you know, what a great job. Um, so today I was going to talk, or I am going to talk, um, about stress, seeing it's getting close to Chrissy and stress is something that uh, is probably not at the forefront of everyone's mind, but it's something that seems to build up around, around Christmas time. Um, and as much as there's stress around Christmas, a lot of people, you know, you hear it all the time, I'm stressed out, you know, I've got this going on, this going on, you know, I'm busy, I'm stressed, I can't sleep. Um, and with hypnotherapy as well, stress is something, if it's not underlying a lot of the causes that people come to see me for, the way they deal with stress is. So, you know, the, the classic is smokers, you know, what is smoke? It relieves stress. It actually, within eight seconds, penetrates your gums and speeds up your heart rate and makes you breathe faster. So it doesn't actually relieve stress. What relieves stress for a smoker is, and I get them, I said, well, show me, show me how you smoke. A longer out breath will relax you straight away. And so the cigarette takes the credit for it. What's actually relaxing them is their breathing. Um, so stress is something that's been around since men have, or since people have been around. Um, and without it, we probably wouldn't evolve, evolve to where we are now yet. It's kept us alive. Um, our flight and fight, that, that's our, our stress response. And it's changed over the years where once it might have been really useful if you're fighting the clan from the other cave down the valley if they're going to steal your mammoth meat and all your berries you've got saved up for the winter or saber tooth tigers or whatever you know it was um it was helpful then when your flight and fight kicks in your body gets flooded with cortisol and adrenaline it speeds your heart rate up makes you breathe faster lifts your blood sugar all the, all the blood goes to your heavy, your big muscles and it prepares you to defend yourself or, or to run. Today, because we don't usually have those life-threatening instances where we get stressed, our brain pattern matches, you know, so it might be your boss shouting at you and your, boss, your brain will think, oh, this is a stressful situation. And so immediately the part of your brain that controls that is called your amygdala, releases the cortisol and the adrenaline into your blood system. And without any real action, um, it just sits there and it wreaks havoc on your body. Um, Overexposure to cortisol over a long time um, gives you huge gut issues, um, you know, blood sugar problems, um, you know, not so much heart attack, but heart disease. Um, so it really causes a lot of, a lot of devastation. Um, so for people, you know, there's different sorts of stress. So there's, there's even good stress, believe it or not. Um, youth stress, they call it. So that's the stress you have if it's almost like what they call performance anxiety, I guess. So if you've got something coming up and you're a bit nervous about it, um, it's that sort of stress that, that, that motivates you, lifts you out of your, your comfort zone and, and drives you to take that extra step forward. Um, 
there's acute stress, which is um, a car crash or you know some dog comes running out, you know, and you might you might be on shock or be stressed for a day or so, that then you're back to normal again. Um, but the main one is, is chronic stress. And chronic stress is, you know, if you've got a, a terrible boss and you go to work every day and, and they'll stress you out by, you know, just by their mannerism, you know, they can, people can be pretty nasty to each other. Um, and the chronic, chronic stress, you know, your, your baseline level of stress will, will increase. And so over time, um, instead of your, your stress level might be down here and someone says something that might come up a bit then go back down, it remains higher over a while. And, and so the cortisol and all those things are running around your body. Um, and yeah, it's, it's, it's not good. It's not good for anyone. Um, but there is things you can do about it. Um, like I said, a lot of people come to see me and it's the result of their coping mechanisms for stress. So people drink and people smoke and they take other forms of drugs or you know, other addictions that will block out the stress momentarily and, and block out the pain, I guess, for them. Um, but there's healthy ways as well. And so I thought that um, maybe we could practice some healthy ways of, of dealing with stress. Um, like I said with smokers, um, they're out there, um, is actually what's relaxing them and, and not the cigarettes. And so there's different different ways to deal with stress for, for everyone. Nothing, there's no one thing that'll work for everyone, but there is something that'll work for most people most of the time. Um, and the breath is one that I use because it can drop me back down to where I should be in a matter of minutes. Um, so, if everyone's keen, we can do a little breathing exercise and I can show you how easy it is. So, the easiest way to do it is if you sit up straight and you can rest your elbows probably about halfway to your knees along your thighs, so you're, you're leaning forward. And as you do that, you, your belly will drop down, which is what it's meant to do. On your next out breath, if you breathe out and you suck your belly up a bit, so you've just got a little bit of a hollow there. You don't have to try and pull everything up under your ribs, but just a little bit. So your belly's up, then your next in-breath, let your belly drop down. And as it drops down, you can breathe in. Breathe in, then as you breathe out again, pull your belly back up. Now it feels a bit weird. It's quite often the opposite to what we breathe a lot of the time. So breathe in, belly up, breathe out, your belly drops down. And if you can try about three or four of those, you'll find that it's quite a relaxing experience. And then to add to that, if you've sort of got that challenge sorted out, a little bit more to it is if you make your out breath a little bit longer than your inhalation. So if you can inhale for say four, try exhaling for six or eight or something like that. interesting to know that, or to become aware of that what you've actually done just then is activate a nerve in your body called your vagus nerve and your vagus nerve controls what's called your parasympathetic nervous system which is the exact opposite to your flight and fight so your flight and fight gets turned on something stress happens if you can do that a breathing exercise like that it reverses it, it, it turns on the exact opposite part of your nervous system and it can relax you out of that stressful thing. In saying that, that won't, that doesn't help for everyone. Um, you know, for some people, they need to go and do something physical. They'll need to go out in the back shed and belt into the boxing bag or they'll need to chuck their shoes on and run down the road or go for a swim, you know, which in a sense replicates some of the flight and fight. You're burning off the cortisol and the adrenaline. You can't always do that if you're in the office or if you're stressed about a meeting or something like that. You know, you can't just, well, you 
and run out, I guess, but it's probably not productive <laughs> for what you're trying to get across. Um, yeah, some people will listen to music and, and do it that way. Some people will watch TV, and quite often people who are, are listening to music, watching TV, um, I guess some people, a lot of people now probably use social media just to relax and you know, get on their phone. They get into a state that people call, you know, they're zoned out. You know, mm -hmm. if someone's watching TV, oh, they can't hear you. Mm -hmm. They're zoned out, you know. Which is, as a hypnotherapist, is really quite interesting because being zoned out is a state that you call a disassociative state. Mm -hmm. So people have disassociated themselves from whatever's going around on around them and they're in a focused state of attention, which is exactly what hypnotherapy is. Their, their attention is focused on something to the exclusion of all other stuff that's going on around. So it's not like um, someone's got control of you or anything like that. You're just really intensely focused on what someone's saying. Um, another um, another way of, of getting through a stressful situation, and again, it's, it's more of a physical one, is called progressive muscle relaxation. Yeah, I'm not sure. And we sort of almost did a bit of one there before, D. Um, and so, if you're willing, we can do a progressive muscle bit of relaxation. Now, one part about this that's definitely relaxing is that any time you tense any muscles, um, there is a short period of a few seconds afterwards where, um, as your muscle relaxes, again, um, it triggers the rest of your body and your body and your mind, and you'll relax as well. And that's why um, some people who have anger issues and that sort of stuff, they'll get really angry because as soon as they're finished being angry, they go to a place where they're really quite calm. And so quite often it's not the anger that's driving them, it's that subconsciously they know that they can get to the calm place afterwards. Um, so with a progressive muscle relaxation, um, what we can do is go through it and at the end, um, we'll go from our toes up, up to our heads. At the end, what I'll ask you to do is just, if you can give yourself permission to just um, let your eyes close, and I can lead you through a little guided journey that will be really, really relaxing and 100% stress-free. <laughs> so if we start uh, with our toes, I guess, and just crunch your toes up really tight. As you crunch them up, take a, a breath in, and then let them go, and just with a nice exhalation, go back out. Then next, we move on to our calves. So if you point your toes up towards your knees, and tense your calf muscles up, with an in-breath, and then just breathe out and let them go. And the timing is completely up to you. If I'm going too fast or too slow, you can do it exactly however is most comfortable. Um, so next is thighs. So tense our thighs up with an in-breath. Then just let them go. Maybe now even your legs will feel a little relaxed or heavy or light or warm, however they might feel. Um, next, clench your bum together. And then let go. That probably feels good after being sitting down for a while. <laughs> Next, our back and our tummies tense up all that, all that torso area. Tense it up and then just relax. Let it go. It's really good to be able to take the time to just relax and care and look after ourselves. Next, our hands and arms. Tense those right up with a good inhalation. And then when we're ready, we just let them go. The stress and tension can really start to shift from our body. Next, our shoulders. We've got a lot of stress in our shoulders. It's the weight of the world, they say. Pretty tight. 
Todd Nashaw was up. And this limping guy in the middle of all that stress. Some milk out of those as well. Your neck. Tense your neck up somehow. There's also a lot of stresses held there. Shoulders and neck, loose and relax. And then, last thing of all, our face and jaw, which also holds a lot of stress. You tense and screw your face up and clench your jaw, and then just breathe out. associated with any stress. And you're sitting there in that beautiful, relaxed state. You might have noticed that your breathing has begun to slow down. It can be interesting as you begin to relax. Breathing slows. The more relaxed you relax, the more your breathing slows. The more your breathing slows, the more you relax. Be aware of your feet on the floor. The chair. part of your body is the most relaxed. Maybe your finger. Your elbow. Your knee. It really doesn't matter. Just one part. sitting relaxed, you can picture yourself in a large area of soft green lawn, it's a beautiful day, it's not too hot, it's not too cold, it's just the temperature. standing, feeling your feet in the grass, be aware of some children playing in the playground, think to yourself how carefree those children are, there's definitely no stress there. a set of large limestone steps and that leads down to the beach. As you look out, the ocean is quite calm and relaxed, almost like the ocean is relaxed and not stressed as well. So I'd like you to, step by step, down the stairs towards the beach, step by step, down and down, and more and more deeply relaxed, step by step, down and down, and more deeply relaxed, your legs are heavy and relaxed. 
step. There's a step up. premise with hypnotherapy is that in our subconscious we've got all the resources we need to get over whatever our problem might be but we can't generally access our subconscious by ourselves um, in doing hypnotherapy you can become aware it's almost like joining the dots 
become aware of the resources that you have and quite often I'll ring people a week after we'll do a session and I'll say, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, it's okay, it's okay. Um, a month later they might say, oh, yeah, yeah, some days are good, depending on you know, what the person has come to see me for. I saw a lady about a month ago who came to see me about two and a half years ago and she said, Steve, I'm sure I'm still getting the effects of it. She was a really anxious driver, wouldn't drive at night time, would never drive to the city, and she was a shift worker and she had to. Um, and she would be coming back from Bunbury and have panic attacks all over the car, and sit there for half an hour before she could drive again. Um, she said, I can drive anywhere, any time of the day. I'd, I'd go to Perth, see my friends, drive around. Um, and she said, I'm just continuing to become more confident as a driver. Um, so, yeah, it's great to hear mm -hmm. things like that. Um, what often people expect, you know, and I guess we're led to believe, you know, in, in our day and age, you know, you know, I want to fix now, and if it's not fixed, I'll walk out the door, it won't happen. Um, but yeah, she was proof that, um, you know, things continue to, to roll on and, and to change once you've started a change. So, um, yeah, so I hope that was relaxing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you.